Hello everyone. I hope you all are doing good. Let's start the another interesting topics of WebRTC tutorial series. Today let us learn how to implement a WebRTC chatroom application. In the last video we have already discussed the design of this chat application. If you haven't watched the video, please go and watch that video. That will help you to know what design we are following in this application. First of all, welcome all to Engineering Semester channel. Here we are providing new emerging technologies tutorials. If you are new to this channel or new to this WebRTC series, please go and watch our introduction part first. Now let's get into it. Before going to implement the chat room application, I would like to show the working demo of the WebRTC chat application. Once you open the HTML page, you can able to log into the server with random username. Now we can log in as two usernames with two tabs of HTML page. After login you can see the online user list in the left side. We have logged as test user 1 and test user 2. So the test user 1 can see the available user for chatting is test user 2. If you press the username, you can see a pop-up will come and ask for the chat request. You can see in another side, a pop-up will come with answer or reject button. Once you accept the answer, you can able to chat with other user. This is achieved by WebRTC data channel. Now you can send messages between user 1 and user 2. All the messages will be handled by WebRTC technology. Finally, if user want to leave from the room, they can click the leave room button. I hope you understood now how this WebRTC chat application going to work. Next, let us move to the coding part. We have already discussed that we are going to use HTML for client site application and Node.js for signaling server. So first let us write the code for signaling server. I have written a sample code for Node.js server here. The server will accept the request from client and respond back. One thing you should note. We are not storing any data in the database. Also this chat application will only allow unique username. That means same username cannot used for multiple person. And another important thing, if user is refresh or close the browser, then server will remove the user from the application. If the same user want to use the application, then they have to log in with unique username again. First we have to create a WebSocket to listen the request from client. Node.js offers WebSocket library to create the connection. We can use a random port like 8886 to run the WebSocket. Then we can use array to store the connection details of every user. Once the user logged to the server, then we have store the user connection object. Next we have to store the online user list. For that we can use a new data structure called map. A map is a type of fast key lookup data structure that offers the indexing the elements. It means a kind of index and key pair. We have to store username as index and online details as key. Once the, the socket connection enables, it will be listened to the port number. Client can use this WebSocket to connect with the server. Now once the WebSocket connection enables, we have to check for message events. Client can use direct message and JSON type messages for sending request. Direct messages are using for ping pong implementation. Ping pong implementation means client will send ping message and server will send pong message back. So this way client can ensure that server is alive. If the pong message didn't get from server, then client will assume that server is offline. This is the concept of the ping pong mechanism. JSON message datas are using for login, logout, WebRTC offer, answer and ICE candidate request from client. Let us take one by one. First we have to check the message from client is a JSON or normal message. So to do that we have created a check is JSON function. 
this function will return true for JSON message type and false for other message type. In JSON message request, client has to send a type field in their message. This type field will say about the message content. The type field can be login, offer, answer, IC, etc. Once server received the JSON message, it has to check the type field of the message before processing any request. If the type field is login, this means client is requesting login to the server. So to process that request, server has to check whether the username is already exist or not. We already said that this chat application will only allow unique username. So here we have to check the username is already exist. All the user connection details we can get from user array. Once we create a WebSocket connection, client has to send the username to server with login type field in JSON format. Then server will respond with success or failed message. If same username already taken, then server will send message back to client with false message. If the username is available, then server has to store the username in the connection array. Other name field we are using to indicate whether the user is in chat room or not. Next, server has to keep the online user list. To do that, we are using map data structure. We will make the corresponding username as online. Finally, server has to send the updated user list array to all the user in the server. This will make sure all the user can get the available user list. If a user want to a chat room with another user, then first server have to check the peer user for availability. If the type field is want to call, that means a user is requesting for a chat room. Now server has to check the other user status. If the user is available, then server will send back a message as success. If the user is busy, server will respond as false. Based on this response, server will allow the client to send the offer to other user. Next, if the type field is WebRTC offer, then the server will receive the offer from the user who want the chat room. When the user want a chat room with peer user, the user has to send a offer request to the peer user. So to achieve this, the user send offer to server first and server send this offer to peer user. You can see here, the server first check whether the user exists using the array with name. If the user is exist and the user is available, then server will send the offer request to peer user. If the peer user is already in another room, server will send back already in room message as true. There are three scenarios will happen when user requests a room. Either user can accept the offer by answering or user can reject the offer. If the type field is busy, that means the requested user is rejected the call. So server needs to reply to that offer by sending the message as peer is rejected the offer and he is busy. If the type field is WebRTC answer, then the peer user is ready for chat. The user has to send WebRTC answer to other user. In order to achieve this, user will send answer request to server. Then server will receive the answer and send it to the user who want that answer. Next if the type is WebRTC ICE candidate. Then the server will receive the ICE candidate from one user and send it to the other user. Another type field is ready. The user will send a message to server as ready. Once the server receive this message, server understand that user is ready. Then server will send messages to each of the user with chat room is ready. If the user has received the ready message as true, then the WebRTC connection considered as successful. Indirectly we can say, they are ready for a chat. Finally the server will makes those users status as busy. So no one can request for a chat room until they left from the existing chat room. Another type field is leave. Suppose a chat room has created. If the user want to leave from the chat room, then the user has to send a leave request to server. Server will notify to the other user by sending a message. 
Once the room is closed, then the server will make the status of each user back to online. Another type field is quit. If the user has signed out from the application, then server will delete the user from both connection array and online user list. After that, server has to send the updated online user list to each user. Finally, one more scenario will happen. If the user is forcefully quit the browser, then server has to handle this case also. We can handle this scenario in the WebSocket close event. When this scenario occur, server needs to remove the user from both the array and online user list. If the removed user already in a chat room, then server has to send a left messages to the other peer user. This will make sure the closure of the existing chat room. I hope you got a complete understanding of about the WebRTC signaling server implementation. If you want more understanding, you can download and check the code by yourself. I have to say, this code has not covered 100% of use cases. But I am sure this server code covers most of the use cases. If you want to add more use cases, feel free to download and update the code. You can customize this signaling server code. I have provided the GitHub link of this server code in the description of this video. Our intention is to provide a basic understanding about the WebRTC signaling server and how to handle the use cases. I hope I have done some justice to a certain extent. Now we can implement the main client side JavaScript and HTML in the next video. That's it for now. If you are thinking this is informative, then like and share subscribe. Also support us. See you soon with another video. Thank you. Have a wonderful day.